Uh, let's pick it up now in the actual text. Go to chapter 1, verse 1. Now behold, it came to pass in the commencement of the fortieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, there began to be a serious difficulty among the people of the Nephites. There have been a lot of periods of serious difficulty, but look what makes this different. Verse 2, behold, Pahoran had died and gone the way of all the earth, therefore there began to be a serious contention concerning who should have the judgment seat among the brethren who were the sons of Pahoran. That's interesting. Can you imagine what it might be like to live in a society where there's actually serious contention and fighting and negativity regarding who's going to be your next government leader? I wonder if Mormons saw our day. And by the way, chapter 2 is going to open up with the exact same thing. Serious contention, oh no, who's going to be our next leader, and it leads to this, this negativity and this real a deep divide among the people rather than a unifying thing. So in this first chapter, you get the three sons, Pahoran, Paonkai, and Pacumani, and they're all vying for this judgment seat, and the vote goes to Pahoran, which is fine. Pacumani says, I lost the vote, and he, he gets in line, not Paonkai. Paonkai gets angry, and he stirs up the people in verse 7, gets exceedingly wroth, and because of that, he's condemned unto death in verse 8. So, those who would follow him, they get one named Kishkuman who goes and murders Pahoran while he's on the, the judgment seat. And it was done in secret, he was in disguise, and for the first time we introduce officially in the Book of Mormon secret combinations. Um, by the way, that's why we won't have any padlocks in heaven, right? Because secret combinations are bad. <laughs> Let me share a thought here. Back here in verse 3, these people who wanted power and authority in the Nephite civilization, they were the ones who did cause the people to contend. So it invites us to ask ourselves, are we actually seeking peace, love, understanding, or are we driving contention? Are we driving misunderstanding? And I think it's significant that these three guys were causing the people to contend. And if you go back to King Benjamin's speech, he says to the parents, don't let your children contend with one another. Well, what if actually the parents actually caused the children to contend with one another. I mean, that's even worse. And in some ways, that's what the government leaders were doing. And this is why it's so important in societies everywhere that people look first at the inner vessel and say, am I seeking to understand others? Am I seeking to be Christ-like? And am I seeking to avoid contention? Now, look, we don't just sit around passively and get walked all over, you know, if somebody's going to, um, you know, try, try to, you know, ruin our world. But the idea here is that it is possible to prosperously find ways to get people in power who will, who will live righteously and rule righteously. But when the leaders are driving the contention, it creates enormous problems in society because then people start choosing sides. And the last time we checked the scriptures, I don't think God ever had any sides except his side. I don't think he takes political sides. So this is important. And maybe also just point out something also interesting about uh, Kishkumen. The first person to introduce secret combinations in the Book of Mormon is in the Jaredite record, a guy named A. Kish. I think it's interesting that the first person to bring it into Nephite society was this guy named Kishkumen. Now, this is just my speculation. I just wonder, you know, if somehow Kishkumen may have been part of one of the Jaredite descendants. Because even we have this guy named Coriantumr later, 
And it's, it may be possible that there were descendants of the Jaredites floating around who had access to these seer combinations that provided it. And of course, at the same time, Satan has a way of working with people and getting seer combinations into their hearts and minds. And let's also provide this idea. Secret combinations is in contrast to sacred covenants. We've talked about this recently. Secret combinations is all about being focused on yourself And we'll erase this in a little bit. Where sacred covenants is about being focused outward on others. And if we look at what's going on here, who are the people serving? Secret combinations is all about serving yourself and to seek power at the expense of others. Where sacred covenants is about using your power to empower others that they can have lives of prosperity. So just a couple of things to consider that as you look at what we are offered in the gospel, we are taught to bind ourselves into sacred covenants to serve one another, to love God, love your neighbor. Your combinations is hate God, hate your neighbor. So chapter one concludes with this entry of the Lamanite army that we had talked about before where they take over the capital city, they kill the chief judge, and then they go north, and then they finally get surrounded, and that war ends, leaving us with a lot of problems. Chapter 2, verse 1, it came to pass in the forty and second year of the reign of the judges, after Moronihah had established again peace between the Nephites and the Lamanites, behold, there was no one to fill the judgment seat. Therefore, there began to be a contention again among the people concerning who should fill the judgment seat. And it came to pass that Helaman, who was the son of Helaman, was appointed to fill the judgment seat by the voice of the people. Now, the, this group of Kishkumen, this group that we've been referring to as secret combinations, gets described in much greater detail in chapter 2. Look at verse 4. Uh, there was one Gadianton who was exceedingly expert in many words and also in his craft to carry on the secret work of murder and of robbery. Therefore, he became the leader of the band of Kishkumen. That's why we call them the Gadianton robbers for the rest of the Book of Mormon. And what are they robbing? It's not thievery. Robbery is all about uh, insurrection and overthrowing political order but yeah, they're robbing people of their lives and livelihoods. So check this out. Verse 5, therefore he did flatter them and also Kishkumen that if they would place him in the judgment seat, he would grant unto those who belonged to his band that they should be placed in power and authority among the people. Therefore, Kishkumen sought to destroy Helaman. Uh, we're told multiple times that no righteous person is ever taken from this life before their mission is complete or before their time. So it is with Helaman. His mission is not complete. So Kishkumen comes to, to do the same thing he had done to Pahoran before, but the servant of Helaman saw him, recognized him somehow, had had enough knowledge of what was going on, gave him a secret sign, he shared his desire, and at that point uh, Mormon pauses here to give you a nutshell definition of what it means when we say secret combinations. Look at verse 8. This is the simplest nutshell definition I can, I can find for secret combinations. Notice what's involved. Number one, when the servant of, of uh, Helaman had known all the, of the heart of Kishkumen and how that it was his object to murder, and it was also the object of all those who belonged to this band to murder and to rob and to uh, gain power, and this was all done in secret, not out in the open. 
So Taylor's talking about sacred covenants versus secret combinations. This is how Satan does his work, in the dark, in the corners, under the cloak and the guise of, of uh, disguise, secretly going about to murder, to kill other people, to rob in order for him to get gain, to gain power and to gain things. Notice, and this was their secret plan and their combination. That's exactly what Satan did in heaven in the premortal uh, war, and he hasn't changed his strategy in all these years, in all the interim. He's still, still trying to secretly destroy each of us to steal from – to rob from us, rob life, rob agency, rob everything from us in order for him to gain power over us. Secret combinations are alive and well in, in many levels and in many layers today. And uh, you then watch he – the servant kills Kishkumen, and then Gadianton finds out that – or is scared that he hasn't come back in time, so they flee before we can destroy that band. And look at verse 13. Behold, in the end of this book ye shall see that this Gadianton did prove the overthrow, yea, almost the entire destruction of the people of Nephi. 